All right, folks, so we're going to talk a little bit more today about how to calculate the amount of a specific charge form of an amino acid at a given pH. Now, this question starts out simple. Uh, we have obtained 50 molar, millimolar solution of glycine at a pH of 6. Calculate the concentration of all three charge forms of glycine at the pH, given the pKa's 0.35 and 9.78. So if we look at our glycine, um, we have two groups. We have the amino group and we have the carboxy group. Uh, that are both titratable, which means they can change in protonation states. Now remember that the NH2 group uh, is either positive or neutral. When it's protonated, it's positive. When it's neutral, it's uh, neutral. Of course, when it's deprotonated. And our carboxy group, when it's fully protonated, is neutral. And when it is deprotonated, it becomes negative. Um, glycine does not have a charged side chain. It just has a simple hydrogen which you can see actually two of. And that actually gives glycine some interesting properties as an amino acid uh, when we're talking about secondary structures. Uh, but for glycine, the important charge and titratable uh, pieces of this are just the amino and carboxy end of the amino acid. And so we need to calculate uh, the actual fraction in all three charge forms. Now for any amino acid, the number of charge forms that exist is the number of states for each, amino acid, uh, each group. Uh, we have two states. It's either positive or neutral, or neutral or negative. It can't be positive, neutral, negative. Only two ever for any given state, any given uh, group at physiological pHs. Uh, two, the number of groups. So we have two states for each group. Through the second, we would have four possible. Okay, but there's actually only three observable charge forms. These are called macroscopic. Which means easily observed. Um, and so we're going to calculate all of those. But first, we need to kind of figure out what they look like. Now, we could draw the structure over and over again, um, but what we're actually, the easy way to do this is to just draw it in a simplified ball and stick model here. So the backbone here is the, is the horizontal piece. On the left, I always have my nitrogen, and on the right, I usually have my carboxy group. Okay. Uh, and again, our charge space for these are positive, neutral on the on C, and I will put my pKa's as well. So uh, the more basic one is our amino. Remember that the amino groups are usually around 9. So I know my pKa there is 9.78. And for my carboxy end, my uh, pKa is 2.35. Um, and so that's the import, important information I need to start setting up my, um, my charge forms. Now I can start figuring out which charge forms actually exist by looking at the protonated states. So the most protonated state for the N is positive, and the most protonated state for the C is neutral. If you add those up, we end up with a positive one charge form. Um, and we do the same thing. If the least protonated, it's neutral at the end, and negative at the C, and so we go to a negative one. Okay. And we have to connect these. These can only change by uh, intervals of one or integers, a single integer. And they have to connect plus one to negative one going through zero. And so we end up with the three charge forms, a plus one neutral and a negative one. Now this will switch uh, as uh, from charge state to charge state as we pass the pKa's. And so our guy, when it starts out positive, as we start raising the pH and changing the uh, states from protonated to deprotonated, we are going to first pass our carboxy pKa. And our charge forms are going to switch from the plus one overall to the zero at, after a pKa of 0.35. And then it's going to switch from a 0 to a negative 1 at a pKa of 9.7. So those are our switches. As we pass those, we're going to flip from one state to the other. And so what we can do here is we can draw out our balance model for all three of our charge forms, the 0, the 1, and the negative 1. And we can figure out what those look like in terms of protonation states. Uh, this one's pretty easy to plus one. We know that if we plus one, it must be protonated at the end and protonated at the C. So we are going to have a plus zero um, for our glycine. For zero, we're going to have passed our 2.35 to switch it from plus one to zero. And we're going to switch into the lower charge state, the deprotonated state. And so nothing is going to happen at our, our end, but the C terminus is going to become deprotonated. And for our minus one, we're going to have passed the 9.78 as we move towards the more negative charges. We're going to deprotonate our end group. And so we're going to end up with a neutral N terminus and a negative C terminus. Those are our three charged forms.
Now what we need to do is calculate the fraction and the concentration. And so for our plus one, what are the charge states we see here? We have plus one here, and that corresponds to our protonated state. So we would need to calculate the fraction uh, in the protonated state at the N. And then also at the C, because the most protonated state of the carboxy end is a zero. We know that we would also need to calculate the fraction protonated at the C. Now if we do that, uh, we are going to uh, need to figure out the odds of it being in both states, both positive here and neutral here, both protonated and protonated. And in order to do that, we need to multiply the fraction by each other. Um, so the odds of it being a positive and the odds of it being a zero at the state multiplied by each other. Like Sitting two heads in a row on a quarter, the first head is one to two, or a half uh, chance of getting ahead, but hitting two in a row is one half times one half, and so it's the odds are, are shorter. Uh, when you multiply them together. Okay. Uh, let's do the same thing over here for the plus one. We know that the positive state for the N is the protonated state. Uh, and the deprotonated state is now a fraction deprotonated. It's the negative form of that C. And again, we will multiply those together. And for our negative one, it's going to be the deprotonated for both. So there is our math, uh, just set up. Now remember what happens here. For the fraction protonated, we're going to have a little shorthand. Fraction protonated is the protons concentration of plus in solution over the Ka of the group plus the H plus concentration. Okay. And that derives from the Ka relationship, um, and that makes it easy. For the A minuses, we have instead Ka on the top. So that makes it a little bit easy for us. Just to know these, we can do them in combinations. The only thing that's going to change is our KAs for a lot of these things, and then how we set this up. So for example, we're going to have one of these for the N and a different one for our C. And remember that those KAs are different. They are different because the PKs are different. And so the things that are going to change here would be those KA values. I'm giving myself some more, more, more room to work here. Now let's start solving. For the plus one form, we are going to need the fraction HA at the end. So I'm going to start plugging in some values. Our pH here was uh, 6. So our H plus concentration is 10 to the negative pH or 10 to the negative 6. All over Ka, uh, the, a, the NKA was 9.78 pKa. And C was 2.35. Okay, so our Ka for the N is 10 to the negative 9.78 plus 10 to the negative 6. Remember, again, recall we're H plus over K plus H plus. And then we'll do it for the C. 10 to the negative 6 again, all over 10 to the negative 2.35 for the carbon and the carboxy N. Okay. Great. So let's look at this before we actually plug any numbers in. Which we can help us out here. Make sure we don't plug it in. Ten to the negative six is much larger than ten to the negative nine point seven eight. Actually, by about a thousand or ten thousand times larger. So the ten to the negative sixes are very large, and they'll just approximate one. To actually solve that, uh, the actual value of that number is. You actually plug that in. Remember that these are going to be bounded by 0 and 1. Because it's just a fraction between 0 and 100 percent, right? So 99.98 percent of n termini are protonated at a pH of 6. Does that make sense? Well, it should because our pH is below our pKa, right? When the pH is below the pKa, the group should be net protonated. Now let's look at, so this makes sense, protonated. Check, okay? Uh, now, we want this to be protonated at the C-terminus as well. Our pKa is 2.35, but our pH is 6. So our intuition should tell us that when the pH is above our pKa, we should be net deprotonated. 
And indeed, uh, if you look at this, the 2.3, 10 to the negative 2.35 is like 0.01. Uh, and that's much larger than 10 to the negative sixth. And so this number is really big. Small number of our big number is usually around zero. And if we actually plug this in, our math, 0. 0.000224 is our actual answer. It is deprotonated. So we don't see a lot of this. We don't actually see it in the form we want to see it in. We won't see very much of this. In fact, our actual solution here uh, is, again, 0. 0.000224 which is our fraction in the plus one. But this question was asking for concentrations, and so we need to act, multiply by the concentration of glycine, uh, which was 50 micromolar in the original stem, correct? 50 millimolar, oh, 50 millimolar, sorry, 50 millimolar. Okay, multiply by 50 millimolar, and we get a, fra a concentration in the plus one of 0 0.0111 millimolar. So there we go. That's the fraction in the plus one. Now let's do the fraction in the zero. Do you remember what our zero form looked like? Fraction in the zero form, scroll back up here, was this guy here, the zero which is positive at one end, negative at the other. So I need to have both a protonated at the end and deprotonated at the C. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Let me set this up. Uh, fraction protonated. So that is going to be uh, H plus. over Ka, just like we saw before. It's actually going to be the exact same number, but I'm going to plug it in anyway. 10 to the negative 6th, all over 10 to the negative 9.78, plus 10 to the negative 6th. Oopsie. And then we're going to multiply the fraction deprotonated at the C. Now, what changes here is our Ka goes on the top. Okay. That doesn't change much, but it does change it enough that we're going to see a big difference here when we go and solve. Okay, so our, on the last one, we saw that this number was 0.9998. Same math as before because it's the same fraction protonated solution. But here, 10 to the negative 2 over 10 to the negative 2 is, again, that big number. So what we're going to see here is that this big number over the same number is approximately 1. Can we actually solve that? It's actually 99999. Multiply those together, we get 0 0.999833. And that's the fraction in the zero form, or the isoelectric form, in other words, you might know it. And we'll multiply that by our 50 millimolar, which is our total concentration. We get 49.99 millimolar. And that is our concentration in the zero form. Great. All right, well, uh, we could go about trying to solve all this out, um, but let us not forget about our negative one. It's not going to be very much. We can already account for almost everything. In fact, if I hadn't rounded this, you would see that um, our millimolar should already be around 50. So we shouldn't see very much over here in the minus one. But again, on our minus one, we are going to have deprotonated at both spots. Okay? So we're going to have fraction deprotonated at the N times the fraction deprotonated at the C. And so let's plug that in. 10 to the negative 9.78 this time, which is the Ka of the N. 10 to the negative 9.78 plus 10 to the negative 6, which is our pH, times 10 to the negative 2.35 all over 10 to the negative 2.35 plus 10 to the negative 6. 
Okay, so this guy again, big number on the bottom, 10 to the negative 6, small number on the top, just being zero. Uh, when I solve that, 0. 0.000166 is the fraction at the end. We don't have a lot of this. Does that make sense? Well, our pH is above the pKa, or our, PKA, sorry, our pH is below the pKa. We should be protonated. Uh, we're not going to see very much deprotonated because our pHs are below our pKa, so that makes a reasonable number. Um, here, we're trying to be deprotonated. Our pH is above our pKa, so we should see a lot of protonated. And again, we saw that number was 0.9999. So we end up with a fraction of 0.008297. Times 50, we get a fraction in the minus one, or actually a concentration in the minus one, equal to point. Shoot. Sorry, that's my bad. My bad. That is actually a concentration here. The this piece up here equals 0 0.0016, and so that times 50. We're going to get that thing. So our concentration of the minus one is 0 0.08297 millimolar. That's the concentration of all three of our forms. We had 0 0.011 millimolar for plus one, 49.99 millimolar out of 50 for the zero, and negative one uh, was 0 0.00827. Uh, 297. So we have our predominant form again is our is going to be our isoelectric form. That should make sense here. Uh, how would that how would we know if that makes sense? Well, uh, if we're at pH six, we are right between 2.35 and 6.7, 9.78, which should be like right here. So that should be a good way of uh, verifying to yourself that we should have a lot of this thing. We are between our two pKa's. We are in squarely in place where a lot of zeros should be. And so having a lot of zeros should make a lot of sense.